Welcome back to the shop. Today we're putting the Lexus transfer case back together. I want to show you the parts that we're using. We got Zane over there cleaning up a retainer. This was the gasket kit. It comes with the seals for the outputs, the seals for the yokes, new gaskets for your plugs, this shift shaft seal that goes here. Uh, we've also got the transfer case this guy, the transfer case actuator kit. What Zane's doing, he's got the razor knife, taking all the old sealant off there. I've done this one so far. That's just, you just want to knock the old sealant off and use a little Scotch Bright pad to shine it up. You don't want to use the grinder on these. I'm going to knock that seal out of their neck. I've just got an old piece of key stock here that I've taken and made a little punch out of. I'm trying to do that without nicking up that inside edge. All right, I've got it on a block there where I can hit it a little better. I'll just remove the last of that little sealant, clean that edge up. We can match that up to our kit MK043A. Any of you that have seen the channel know this trick already, but I'll reiterate it. Put a little grease behind that seal. Alright, she's down. These are neat little seals that go in the yolks. And that prevents any oil or grease from traveling down the splines and out from underneath the, the nut later. It's kind of the first time, I, well not the first time, but you don't, you don't see very many units sealed like that. That one's changed. Just about to push those in by hand. Yeah, you don't even need to really tap them. There you go. That's even easier. This is that shift shaft seal. You can pop it right out. So. And again, that one you can just push in by hand. Just down flush. That's another seal that you can just push. You just push it right down to where it goes. You don't need to drive it with a driver or a hammer. A lot of the times when you get those like good factory quality seals where they've spent the money to pay for the extra coating around the perimeter and the double lips and you know, they didn't buy the cheapest seal for the shaft they could here. And you can just push it in the bore by hand. I just want to show the viewers here how I can, how one at home can clean these sealed together surfaces. Probably shouldn't do that right over my brand new seal. I'm going to get called out for that. Yeah, you'll get stuff all over the place. And it's still dirt, dirty here, so. I hope you can see. I'm not peeling any metal off there. I'm just taking the orange, the old glue. All these, this whole transfer case just glues together. You can take your Scotch Brite pad and you can scuff the last of that residue off of there real quickly.
If you have to drive a seal like that, make sure you're only hitting. I'll try to demonstrate. I'll show you at least. See on this seal where I've driven it out, it's easily deformed where it's thin. You have to drive on the edge, just like that, straight down on the edge. Or you deform it and it won't seal. Or like ideally there's probably some sort of special T, you know, special made seal driver that would drive that without touching the lip. It would sit just right perfect around there and it would sh stop on that shoulder and you know, it'd be great. But I don't have every specialty seal driver in the world. I've got a punch that'll do most of that. Another thing to look for on these when you pop them off the case, with the, sometimes you got a good little screwdriver action under these corners. Make sure you haven't raised a burr anywhere. Here's a spot. I've got a little burr raised. I'll get in there and zoom in on it. We'll take care of it. You see right there, I had to get a little something under it to pop that up. So I'm going to take that down with this file real quick. Just trying to do that without shaking all over so you can see it. rough spot in the casting too. I've kind of gone about this a little bit backwards. I should have probably got all the case prep work done before we put the new seals in, but we'll make sure we wipe them off and regrease them if we've got any of this orange stuff on them. It's just good practice to have your cases all prepped and then put all your seals in, but we're, we really just dove out here today to try to get some work done real quick and jumped into it. If I do something that's not the best practice, I'll try to call myself out on it and tell you guys why I feel that way. I will try to do the best thing I know how to though. Oh mm, boy. So that guy is loose. We'll just pull him out of there. We're gonna lose it anyways. You've got one too, Zane, so don't lose yours. Why don't you grab a pair of pliers on the plier door and see if you can get that doll out. Don't scratch the case up around it, though. Yeah. 
show them what we got there. We got the mating panel to the other half of the case. I like to get them like this. Try to get them rotating. If you can get it rotating, you can get it out of there. There goes the blast at the core. Poof. Hope you guys can pick that up on camera. It's kind of neat. We're out here right by a rock quarry. Every day. You can hear the ground shake. Feel it. If you're outside, you can hear the sirens going off, telling you that it's coming. I also want to do inside of here because an o-ring goes there for the shift actuator. I want it to go back together smoothly and not have to jump over that little bit of corrosion. Okay, so we went ahead and blew all the parts back off. The compressors just got done running. Now we've taken, I've done this a little bit already, but we're just going to take some alcohol. And... Uh, Good clean rag. Wipe all this stuff off. I'll get rid of any residue of oil or grease or the glue that may be left over. We put down a fresh mat to protect these surfaces that we've cleaned up and look them over, make sure there's no burrs or scratches that are going to impede our new gasket sealant and prep. And yeah, watch for those little boogers where they tear the rag on the edges. Okay, that's good. That's supposed, that mat's supposed to have some sort of anti-corrosion coating on it, so I'm going to go and, oh and there's some more orange stuff. Wipe it one more time. And we'll be ready to put some parts in it in a minute. Same with this guy. We'll just... We've blown it off and cleaned it again. We're just making sure that there's no residue or oil or grease on our gasket surfaces. Because that glue is an anaerobic sealant that we're going to be using. So it's going to be a liquid, but it needs to seal on fresh, clean metal. As soon as you squeeze it down and remove the air, that's going to cause that sealant to set up. That's literally what it means, anaerobic. First thing into the case is going to be this planetary gear set. I've got a little bit of luber plate and whey lube mixed up here, actually. So that's what I had. Now, on these little rings here, I'm going to make sure they're like piston rings in a car, kind of. I'm going to make sure that they're spinning and clean and free and don't have any burrs on them and in good shape. I'm go ahead and lube them up. a little bit on there make sure that snap rings on there and then I want to put a little bit of oil I'm going to oil these gears where they rotate on the ends and get a little bit on the teeth too and then down inside of there we'll let a little bit run on the front side and a little bit run down the back side to get that center gear
I always like to lube up the clutching teeth so they can slide in nicely and there's a bushing inside of here with we'll hit and make sure it's smooth. And down inside where those rings are in. Okay, that piece looks good. Now it, slide, it sits right down in there and I think we're gonna have to put this up on these blocks. I got the whole assembly, these teeth here. <clears throat> we're gonna line up inside that planetary set. We've got the snap ring in there. And uh, that bearing is gonna go in here and that's what it's gonna slide on. So reach in there and grab the snout of it to pilot it. You can look in this hole in the top and you can look in the front to get yourself lined up and just turn it a little as I go in and it'll go smooth. That's in. Okay, <clears throat> let go. There. And there's a snap ring that goes around this to keep that from going back out. It goes around that bearing and that'll keep that whole assembly from going back through the case. So until it's on there, you kind of have to avoid that moving in and out. Now that it's on there, now it'll sit there. Now we could put it up on blocks, is what we need to do really to keep going. Right, could you grab a band-aid out of that first aid kit thing and we'll just wrap it up real quick? Yeah, that's better. I'll let us work on it at least. Go and open it up. We'll do this on camera. I'll put this on the air for everybody. People like this kind of stuff. So like that's the finer part of working on machined surfaces. Let's get it up in the air where the shot's better, I think. Uh, Try it from there. I don't really like it in that way. Okay. So this is what happened. I was setting all this up. My thumb graced across one of these edges here. And these are all just pretty sharp. So be careful when you're working on stuff. Just even moving it around, you can slice yourself. So I figured we'd clean this up so everybody can see how to do a little first aid there. You take your alcohol and just douse yourself right on the cut with all that alcohol. Get, get all the oil off. The alcohol makes sure that you can find the cut. If you weren't aware of where it was, pour alcohol all over your hands. And you'll be aware of where the cut is. But that way you don't get infected. And the band-aid will actually stick to your skin because you, know, you were previously covered in oil. Now you're not. Right there. Right there. All right, back at it. So this guy goes in next. And it's only gonna go one way, but pay attention to the fact that the clutching teeth are cut with their angled teeth up. And I like to put a little oil on all those. And inside here as well. And in the synchronizer, or the, I'm sorry, there's no synchro there. That's just a sliding clutch. But in that ring where the fork rides, we'll oil it up. Okay, and it goes. All right, so what we've got now is the fork that goes between high and low. It goes way down in there through this hole. And goes through that seal we just changed. Once it gets down there, you can go ahead and turn it until it slides a little bit and goes on in. Alright, so the next thing we're going to put in is this pump. I've gone ahead, pre lubed the pump, and it drives off this little shaft there, off that little bore in the middle. And what drives the pump is the outside of that planetary hub. It goes just like that. It sits on two dowel pins there and there. I put a little bit of Loctite on these bolts.
So the next piece that I'm going to be putting in here is this pump filter. We'll pull the oil in there on the O-ring and a little bit on that spout. I don't want to tear the O-ring. There's a filter that goes in here too. It's a magnet. It goes in this slot. I have that in there. And that sits down. You can hear that. Suck that up. But you want to make sure there, that, that's down, that's down. And then we've got three bolts. The uh, aforementioned shorter three. We'll put a little Loctite on them. I like to put Loctite on anything that goes inside of a case that I can't get to later. Just makes me feel better about it not falling into anything. If it happened to work loose with magic. I don't know why. You'll find that a lot though. The internal fasteners have Loctite on them from the factory and a lot of specs tell you working inside of an engine or transmission from the manual's point of view to apply it as well. So I guess everybody's always been paranoid about it. But there's no magic that's going to come along and loosen it either. That's the thrust surface that goes there, and you can see where the bearing's been riding on it. There it goes. A little bit of lube on everything. I've already lubed inside of here, but just for the sake of everything, we'll put more. And that collar goes on here. You gotta get it on. It's important to note Again, that you've got clutching teeth here that are sharp on one side and flat on the other. That pointy side is the side that's meant to engage the other pointy side. The flat side doesn't ever engage anything, so it's just going to ride back here and slide back and forth. So make sure you got some oil on the, everything. Just spread that around a little bit. And then go pointy side to pointy side you can put that down go ahead and slide it on and it'll go anywhere any direction because this piece is spinning this is next that slide and clutch slides right there we'll put a little bit of that on that right down on there and there are <clears throat> bearings in there so try not to just drop it you have to rotate it a little bit as it goes there. I'm trying to get it where I can show you how that slider works Okay, so <clears throat> the center diff on this <clears throat> vehicle is something like a 60-40 Torx bias split naturally. It's just a couple of, we're not going to get into it. Anyway, as you're going, it's going like this. When it wants to lock the center diff, that collar slides there and just makes them all spin the same speed. That's it. And now we've got this ball and this little pocket for it. So you put that in there like that. Make sure it goes. It's supposed to go in there. But you wouldn't do that. There. Make sure you got a little lube on there. And then this guy sits right there. If you have a snap ring that loosens up like that. You can tighten it up. You can see it's out around. They just do that. You know, it's not that big a deal. I like to start by closing it up there first in the middle. Pound on it until it closes up a bit. And then work it 
around into a smaller circle. You just want to make sure that after you get it on there and into the groove it goes into that it snaps down and doesn't have any wiggling around. And when you go back down, especially with one that's previously stretched a little bit, just make sure you don't open it any further than you need to to get it in position. That's a lot better. Still got just a scotch, but it's never going to let the piece turn loose. We'll be okay. It is a lot better. Now, what I want to do to hold that next piece on. And the hope is that that will stay in position while we lower the main shaft down. Look down in there, Zane. We're trying to hit that snout way down in the bottom of that hole. We want to make sure that we don't have our bearing fall off. See, the grease is holding it. No! Grease didn't hold. So, we're going to do this a little different this time. I've got the bearing that we greased up still down there in the bottom where it can stay. It's still held in place with some grease. I put the fork and the sliding clutch the center diff in. We're going to set the output in like this. With the output and the chain and everything all together as one. Like that. Just seemed to be a little easier. What we've got here is our anaerobic sealant. It's kind of thick. And what you want to do is lay down a bead. Make it squish out and you don't want it to be any bigger than about that because it's going to squish out both sides of the case. And it takes a moment to go around. And what I like to do is on my first pass, I'll just go around the inside of the bolt hole like that, being careful to kind of thin it out a little. And I'll keep going. And then when I'm all the way around, I'll come back. And I'll get the outsides and anywhere where it needs any extra. Okay, I'll try to speed up a bit here. Quit talking as much. In the past, I've seen a lot of people when they're using sealants, they like they think that they need to take their finger when they're done and go along and smash that bead and, and spread it out. I that's ill-advised. I highly recommend you don't do that. There's a few reasons why. Um, whatever you've got on your finger isn't, you know, bare metal. Hopefully, you don't have bare metal finger, fingers. And uh, any oil or residue on your finger is going to get in the sealant and cause it to malfunction and not seal. Could anyway. And then you need this bead to be thick so that as your case has, let me get a little fuzzy. As your case halves squeeze together, it squishes this out into any, you know, mal malformed areas or low spots. Fills them in and does its job. So it's, just leave it after you get it squished out. It's kind of neat stuff. It won't harden. Like, if I put this on here, went home, went to bed, came back the next day, it'd still be liquid if I hadn't set a case on it. And it'd be a liquid a week from then. 
But if I put these case halves together and tighten the bolts, wait about five minutes probably, 10 minutes, take it back apart. Now it'll never set up on the edges where it squishes out, but in between them, it'll set like a thin layer of plastic and it'll fill any gaps. It's kind of neat. And then I'll finish my bolt holes like that, which is really an unnecessary step. Um, I do it. And I don't go as much on the outside there. Just a thin layer. These go here. started crooked there. And here. And be careful as you're working on this not to touch anything oily. Not to touch your uh, mating surfaces. We've all got this all wiped off with alcohol. I have broken the rule I just told you about here and touched an oily oil can, but I'm not touching the gasket surface. And I, as I go past back and forth there, I make sure I don't drip. This goes on next. We've got a snap ring. What we're going to do is set this down over these two bearings. Now, this bearing will be captured here. It doesn't move or shim or anything, but this one will pick up a little bit when we're done, and there's a snap ring that retains everything. That's a good enough spot to pick it up in our... shaft's going through that hole right there so as you come down you can catch it first as the first thing that's going to intersect the case make sure you get it in the right hole that helps to push up and down on that fork get it in the slot here make sure it's lined up and moving up and down Oh, boy. I guess that's it. It has a bracket. It goes right in line with these switches. It'll hold some wiring on top. Just like Cousin Justin and Adam Savage. Nolling. Sometimes what you'll see though, and why it's important to check, are that you'll have one or two slightly longer bolts. Maybe they go by the dowel pins, or maybe they go through a bracket. And you need to make sure that, like that guy, just slightly different. Pay attention to those two. And if it helps, you can put them on the steel, get them off the mat, get a side shot of them, and you can see that thing that there's... Actually, three different three different bolt lengths there when you look at it. All right, one more thing before we start bolting it down, I do want to make sure that we can pull that up and put the snap ring on it. Oh, and I hate to try to do that on camera like that. I'm just trying to hold it for a sec there so I can do this without the, everything in place there okay so we've got all our bolts in place a bracket here a bracket here now remember we've got a dowel pin here and a dowel pin here so we're going to snug these bolts down first make sure that the gasket goop 
squishes out evenly all the way around. By doing so, you're allowing the case to pilot itself down the dowels evenly and smoothly first. You don't want to ever pinch it down over here first where it might snag down but be out of position. And then when you go over here to pinch it down, it's going to bind up and try to fight you and maybe just bow and not seal. So start at your dowels, hand tight first. I know I'm using the chrome socket here, but I'm not running these for anything other than just to get them down. I'll get a torque wrench. These guys are going to torque to about 24, 22, 24, I think. Let's see what that feels like. Uh, I should start just like before. I'm going to start on number one and two there, the dowels. Feels perfect. I know I've got them all, but what I like to do next is just a sequential check around the periphery to be more sure of it. The crisscross pattern is critical to suck the case halves together evenly and smoothly and get them to seal. Right now I'm just checking. And by going sequentially one to the next to the next, you don't have to keep track of where you've been or any sort of pattern or order. It's a good double check, good practice to do. You're not affecting the squeeze at this point, it's just clipping. When you come back around to that first dowel, then you know for sure, okay, I indeed did not forget one or do one twice or anything like that. I like to look around, make sure that the stuff's squished out evenly everywhere. It is. You can wipe it off so that you don't get it all over yourself because you're going to be rolling this around a little bit. Next thing you're going to look down and it's going to be all over your good Sunday good meat and shirt. That's a little better. We'll still end up making a mess, but at least we won't just be wearing it. Next thing we need to do is put this retainer on. And again, like before, I'm gonna take a clean rag, some alcohol, make sure we're not dealing with any residue, oil, or grease, which I know we are because we were manhandling it. But we'll get it off there. This guy also goes on right here. This is another spot for more of our sealer. What I'm looking at is that I've put a chisel mark on this case. Right here. And the opposing mark is right here. So I want to line those two marks up that I made when I took it apart. Zane, can you see that right there? It's just a little bit of tiny mark that I'm left with a chisel while I was taking it apart because this has an oil drain hole and it needs to line up properly to uh, oil the bearings. And it also feeds through this hole so as it throws oil around it'll throw some up here down through here it gets on everything. Now there's some engineering into how oil flows through these components so when you're taking them apart if there's a question mark them.
just like that. Punch mark, punch mark. Now here's a trick or a tip I'm gonna tell you. I can go either way on it because it's dangerous as well, but in this case we need to do it. Zane, can you shine a light or the camera right down that bolt hole? I can get a, uh, I don't have a picker. Yeah, I do have a picker right here. So what we're looking at is the fact that this bolt hole goes all the way through the case. And now I've put sealant around all of this. So you, you could probably say to yourself, well, the sealant's going to squish out and, uh, and it's going to get on the bolt thread and that's going to keep the, that's going to keep the oil inside. Eh, not really. Remember this sealant requires pressure and a lack of air and inside that boss there and that threads, if, the, if you don't put it in the thread, just the overflow is not really going to seal the bolt very well. So I put it on the bolt thread. Anytime it goes through the case, and all of these go through the case. And I'm not wrong in doing so, as you can see. This, is, well, this was original to the vehicle, and you can see that the bolts from the factory had thread locking goop and oil sealing goop in their threads. So we're just reapplying it. It's critical, though, that you don't overdo things like this. Don't do every bolt and everything that you touch henceforth and forevermore for the foreseeable future because you saw Roger do this on these bolts. There's a reason I'm doing it on these bolts and these bolts only. You notice I didn't do it on anything else around the periphery where there wasn't oil. Cramming liquids down inside of the bottom of bolt holes is a good way to blow out the bolt hole boss on the cast inside and end up locking your transmission or your transfer case up later. It's a hydraulic lock. You know, the, your, if that cylinder is basically full of liquid and it doesn't have an open cast you know, like a, a hole, let's say it's cast over on the back side and you filled it up with liquid and then tightened the bolt, you'd hear a small crack or a pop as that casting popped off into your transmission. I used to have a little pile of them. Now, people that do that make me a lot of money. I'm not knocking them. Just don't do it to yourselves. Again, now that we're snug, we'll torque those down to 22. Back that off to 20. Okay, there's also three shims that go down here. And, uh, we'll wait to put the yoke on. Now that spot, you wanna kinda dodge as much as you can, not dodge it, but be aware of the fact that you know, oil or something needs to go through there. So don't, and as well as here, you know, see like there's a drilled passage from here to here and it picks up oil here so don't just goop this crap around there like it was when we took it apart and to, to the extent that it the goop just fills that passage you could oil starve a bearing you know what I mean catching what I'm throwing there What I'm going to do is actually, with that nice, clean, oil-free pick, I'm going to make sure that I've 
kind of gave this a fighting chance and smooshed that back away where I crowded it a little bit there. I'm going to pick it out of there and wipe that back off. I'll push that back away just a little bit. Okay. One or two, maybe a couple little thin spots. Right there, one right there, one right there, one right there. Okay, that one's ready. And remember, I want goop there, there, and there. factory gooped all their bolts. I'm just going to put a little bit on those other two. It doesn't need it, but it does help to kind of lock them. Just a smidge on them. Doesn't hurt a bit. We've got two features here to be aware of that are going to be offset to the right. And as well uh, as that has those oil rings that we oiled previously. We want to make sure those are clean. And then we can slide this guy on. And when you get to those oil rings, make sure that it pops up over them nice and easy. Don't force it. I've got my two here that don't go through the case. I've got a little hucky pucky on. And I've got the three here that we put it on to seal the oil. The torque wrench, torque goes down. I would say that the bigger one is going to go right here, based on experience. And that it's going to go against the back of that plunger. We'll go with that. That's in a deeper hole. And this plug is built to pilot that spring. And it kind of sits there level at the edge of it, right, as you put it together. And that bottom of that hole is stepped for that stepped plunger. So I'm almost certain that I'm onto it. And then this one. Oil down there. Ball first. Spring. And that looks like it going to work out just fine. You're going to put a little sealant on these. Keep the oil on the inside. Then we'll make a happy little transfer. These plugs aren't as critical. We're just going to snug them down by hand. In fact, I don't recommend you doing any more than about that. Right there. Okay, we're back to putting that bar down there. That's where the shifter goes in. We'll support it from underneath. There it goes. I'm gonna torque these for that cover that we put on earlier. Make sure they're good and tight. <laughs> as well as take a wrench to the plugs that we replaced the gaskets on for the drain and the fill. Put those in. We've got two sensors, switches, as it were. If you don't have the sensor wrench or sensor socket, you can just use an open end on this. It'll go right around the plugs.
Fuck it, that's better. The lock tight. There's the lock tight. Got it just a little bit past where it was tightened originally, so we're, we know we're good. It still turns. Now we can see where the old stake marks are on there. I'll go ahead and, and re-punch these. That'll just help to keep from ever letting it look back off. Okay. So we've got the detents are in it, the switches are in it, the shift ball, the shift yokes on it. Looks like currently we're in neutral. That's just one to one everywhere. Oh, neutral. There's neutral. There's one rotation of the output shaft. And there's one rotation, rotation of the input shaft. <coughs> and then that's with the inner diff unlocked because it's allowing you to vary that output there. So this should lock that. Yeah. Now it should be one to one there and one to one there and it is <coughs> and if we shift here that gives us low range where we're getting way more gear reduction but still these are locked because we've got our diff lock locked. That's the one that the actuator actuates is the diff lock here. So while I've got that pulled forward, that center diff can't do its job of allowing the torque bias. It's locked and makes these shafts rotate the same. Hope that makes sense for everybody. And when you look right now, we can tell that we're in low range and our range selector is here. The planetary set at the front. And we can tell that we're in low range right now because we're getting some gear reduction out of it. For our input shaft, it's gonna rotate way fast, way more times right now to make one revolution of the output shaft than it does when it's in direct. So watch, I'll, we'll, we'll, we'll see this come around first and I'll keep my finger on it here. So 
that's already one rotation of our input and we've only got one third of a rotation on the output. So I'll back that up again. We see it come around one rotation and we've just lined our output back up. Now when I shift it back from low range to high, that's going to make that one to one again. So as I make one rotation there, I've made one rotation there. Okay, so the next thing we've got to do is change these actuator seals. And that was a separate kit. Remember that you're going to have to buy one seal kit for the transfer case and a different one for the actuator seal. But these are common leak points on this unit anyways. So I'm kind of glad to get in here and get these. You want to be careful doing this. I can see the whole plastic part flexing as I push this seal down. So I'm working around the edge, trying to get it to go even. It's down over here. I need to go over here more and push. Sometimes when you go down, you have to, if it's not going, like that one bouncing a lot. So what I did was to get it to go, I pushed on the socket a little and tapped on it, and then it went. Okay, so we've got that. New seal there. I'll put a little grease down in that lip again. And then we've got, it's going in here. I'll put a little grease in there so that starts smooth. I want to lube that rack back up but not excessively just enough that it always has a little fresh on it there and that's the o-ring goes around the periphery all right now that goes just like that I'm going to go ahead and put it on here, and we're going to hope for the best. I don't know if there's any kind of installation procedure you're supposed to follow or not. But what I found is most cars nowadays are smart enough that something like that's going to be a smart device that's powered off of a CAN bus anyways. It's probably just got power ground, data link, and looks like a little bit of something else. But anyway, the important part is when you turn it on, it's probably going to go click, click shift back and forth and home itself and be good from then on. And if it doesn't, we'll get a check engine light or something or it won't work right. And then uh, we'll pull it back off. It's got plenty of room underneath the chassis. And we'll get the books out and we'll do it right. But I have a feeling it's just gonna run. All right. This guy. Little bit of skid plate goes right here with the uh, notch cut out for the front so you can drain the oil. Well, guys, we've got the transfer case rebuild wrapped up. We've shifted it through its gears and it's done its thing. We've got the vent line hooked up, the wiring harness and its bracket here. Everything else is good. This guy uh, goes on the bottom of the chassis. We've got it off. Screen. So it's ready to go back in the vehicle. One more thing I'm gonna do before I go back under there is just a good measure to put a little grease on the splines of you know something like this. Just or anti-seize. Anti-seize would be better. Right there too. Probably have to wipe it off if it gets dirty and redo it, but you know it's good to have it on there. Uh, this guy we ended up having to roll it back over, it goes directly in line with that cover. Put a little grease in there too. Uh, be sure to subscribe to the channel, like, share, all of that. It really does help to grow the channel. I appreciate your time watching it and uh, seeing what we do here. The next video we're going to have is us putting this, this guy back in the Lexus and then driving it around. So, thanks for tuning in.